In today's video, I'm going to break down some Mutt Drafts gameplay. What's up guys, my name is Cody, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, basically what I do is I try to get better at Madden and try to share it with you, and I think that we together can make each other better. One of the things I try to, one of the ways that I try to do that is through simplifying the game of Madden so that you can focus on executing the key things better than everybody else. If you enjoy that kind of footage, if you enjoy that kind of teaching, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we have Madden videos coming at you pretty much every day of the week as we're getting ready for Madden 20. One of my favorite modes to teach from is the Mutt Draft mode. And the reason is because the reason is very simple, actually, because depending on the mode that you play in Madden, it does determine a little bit of the strategy that you have. Everybody has a system. It's really important to, in my opinion, simplify your system, but also to be able to do it with multiple different playbooks. So I think I've got the Oakland playbook here in today's breakdown so looking forward to kind of showing you some of the some of the things that I can do from this I've got Emmett Smith and Gail Sayers as my running backs this is just a standard mutt draft gameplay but again being able to what I like about mutt drafts is you have to adjust your style whatever playbook you have you have to play to the strengths of of that playbook and typically this year in mutt drafts at least from what I've seen it's a lot more effective to run the ball have a run-based system in mutt drafts because, again, you don't have to have – you're not going to be able to have dashing dead eye. You're not going to be able to have um, slot apprentice, you know, all these different things that I think are very important to have if you're going to be a pass-based offense this year. Sim essentially what you're going to have is you're going to be able to get a good running back. You're going to have some different stretch runs and different things like that. And, you know, basically it's going to be kind of a draft champs is much, much, much more a situational base game mode than pretty much any game mode that I've I've got. It's it's all about situations. It's all about adjustments. It's all about defense. And that's why I think it's one of the best modes to teach from. It's also one of the best modes to start with, especially if you like to play mutt. Because if you're good at mutt drafts, you're going to make a lot of coins that you can then get some of those good starter players uh, for mutt head-to-head -head or salary cap so that you're able to execute. So essentially what I'm doing is just kind of testing some different run defenses that he's got here. So far he's got pretty standard, um, pretty simple uh or pretty effective run defense. Now the play that I have that I run, and this is again, you know, like it or hate it. This is this is me, um, and this is just kind of how I play. But I like to go for it on fourth down because it's so critical to not give up possessions. Madness, so 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 much a possession game. Uh, it's not a it's not as much a field possession game as people think. It's much much more a possession game. Can you hold your opponent to field goals? And then can you score uh, touchdowns? And here I think I'm going to go ahead and throw a pick, which is not a good way to start out. Not a good, not a good first drive. Got everything I wanted. Uh, got the best, probably one of the best playbooks in the game. Still not able to execute. So, so now what I'm going to have to do is adjust. And unfortunately, the if you go Oakland, they don't have a very good defensive book. So I'm going to be forced to adjust to him more based off of using this nickel three through five, um, using this nickel three through five uh, uh, defense. So we'll see what he does. Probably going to start out with a little run play inside zone is what I'm banking. He's got Lamar Jackson at Q, so he might be scramble, scrambling around. There's just a simple curl flat play to start. Got a couple yards. My, again, very, very simply, my strategy is I love vert hooks this year. I think they're probably the best yellow. Uh, I think the cover two is just amazing uh, with the way that the clouds, the zones. Um, you know, if you're going to run a zone this year, I really believe in the in the cover two Tampa 2D. But also knowing that, again, this guy, you know, he, he he's going to do a good job. And I can already see that he's going to be kind of focused on it too, to running the ball. So we're going to go down to the show blitz look, cover four, both safeties in the run fit. We'll see what happens here. Just going with that another curl combo, very simple passing play. Again, the only thing that I'm thinking about 
on defense. The only thing that I am thinking about on defense, I want to make this very, very clear. The only thing that I am thinking about on defense is holding him, holding him to three points. That's it. If I can do that, if I can do that one thing, right, I'm going to be okay. So I'm not too worried about inside zone. I'm not too worried about all the other things that he's probably going to try to do to me. Uh, I'm simply focusing in on, you know, what, and there's the angle. Uh, I'm going to run. I don't know how I didn't get that interception, but he's got Lamar. So again, that's a whole nother dynamic that I've got to pay attention to. Um, here I need to Patrick Queen there. So cover two. Got Shaq Griffin. It's really important to spy someone when you're playing him so that when he rolls out of the pocket, there we get him. We're going to be able to hold him to three. So, you know, at least at least we got that. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to go for it. Again, right-handed quarterback. We're going to try to make him roll left. This is all sticks, cover two, coverage. You know, again, very simply. And there we get him. We're able to get the stop. So defense stood tall. Again, that 3 through 5 is pretty much where I'm going to bank on. Now, again, one of the things that I want to talk about really quickly, when you're running the ball this year, um, one of the things that you've got to understand about running the ball in this year's game, it's a little bit different than it's been in years past because of your ability to cut, because of your ability to do a couple little things, it's actually really effective to simply run the HB dive. Really, really, really effective, actually. And so what I like to do is I kind of like to come out in these tight sets. The reason I like the tight sets, again, it's a grinded out style of a game. I'm a run-based offense. I want to focus on running the ball. I tight, strong tight. That H-back, because he's up just a little bit, means he's going to block a little bit differently. He's going to be a little bit more effective. And I always, if I can help it, I want to try to run the ball to the right. The reason I want to run the ball to the right is because as a quarterback, I'm going to get a better handoff animation if I run the ball to the right because my quarterback is right-handed. One of the other things that I recommend when you're doing when you're doing what I'm doing right now, sub in, sub in two really good linemen because again, that's I'm run based. I'm run based. I'm not trying to pass the ball, right? You've seen many, many people this year run the ball, run a simple run based offense, you know, and that's kind of how I'm rolling. And I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get 10 yards in a cloud of dust. I trust my defense. That's my strategy this year. Um, when I'm in a run-based offense. It's a little bit different than it was at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, again, a lot of different people were able to be effective just by simply, and there you see we're going to break one, but just by breaking runs like this, and we're just, you know, Emmett Smith, simple running back. Again, no abilities. One of the, one of the things that, you know, with no abilities, you're not able to have jukebox, not able to have a stiff arm, um, arm bar, not able to have trucking, right? It's going to be more of stick skill. Again, more of a raw kind of way to play. That's why I think mutt drafts, if you're going to look to build skill, this is a really good place to start because you're going to have to learn. You're going to learn a lot about the different playbooks. You're going to learn a lot of different things. So here... Coming up on, let me get a pitch in there. Strong, tight. The weak, close flex has some really, really good running plays in it. Just the way the formation sets itself up. And, but I really like to base my base everything out of eye tight. And Emmett Smith's able to get us in the end zone for seven. Now, um, because I trust my offense so much, I like to go for two. I think this year it's fairly easy to get two yards. Especially if you have the Oakland playbook on the ground, I type. But here we've got the 4-4 split, kind of taking the dive away with the pinch. We're going to try to get wide on him and just outrun him. Emmett Smith for two. So, so really kind of came back after a really bad first possession. Offense came back, running the stretch. 
you know, one of the things you want to work with the run game, when you're a run-based offense, and it's so, so important to remember this, when you are a run-based offense, you want to think about motioning, you want to think about disguising. Those are critical, critical things to think about. All right, so defensively, I still don't quite have my uh, all of my best subs in here. So I'm going to take Khalil Mack, and I'm going to put him over here just, be just because D. Ford can't go to the outside backer spot. And then I'm going to get uh, get my guys where I need them. Okay. So now, you know, again, kind of this is kind of how it should have be, but again, that cover two, I'm just going to sit in that trust the zones for right now until he shows me something but i could see i could see him trying to run a little bit more run based offense i got to be ready for that but again my my mission my goal on defense right is 100% based on my ability to hold him to 3 my ability to hold him to 3 not trying to do too much and i think that's just such a critical critical thing to decide in advance Get Daryl Roberts in there. For some reason my zones got all jacked up. Motion in, auto motion, HB base. So if I really need to stop the run, I'll come into this 4 3 wide 9 type of look here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just make sure it's all set up. But not too worried about the run right now. And he screwed up my zones again. And a user caught it on me. Dang it. That's why you want to audible to the cover to whatever the play is when you come out because of the for whatever reason sometimes formations if they have auto motion I found I found that they will kind of mess things up a little bit but here you'll see now we're he's picking up the pace a little bit here. I love the, the love, 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 love the de delayed bump. And it's just rally and tackle. I'm not sending the spy quick enough. So I need to focus in on that as well. Third and three. And we're going to allow him to kind of sit in that. And we're going we're gonna to be okay here. We're going to say we're okay if... Um, if he runs the ball, we'll be okay. We're going to give him the first down here because, again, field goals over touchdowns. So if he runs the ball, he's got it. If he passes the ball, there you see there's the safeties come in. We're able to get a block shed. That's why we're running the ball from that look. So now I've kind of got him. He probably won't run the ball. Doesn't run the ball. He's going to scramble. Oh, good find, good find, good find. But again, defensively, you see forcing him to drive the ball, forcing him to check down, forcing him to go to different reads. The, the, all of those little things that we're doing right now are really contributing. But there's the scramble. He's going to go to his check down. You know, again, just coverage stats, coverage sacks, forcing him to take. The underneath, the underneath, the underneath. And then what's going to happen is, once we start getting down in the 20, we don't have to worry so much about the deep corner routes, the deep out routes, the deep all those things. And we've already established the culture or the, the norm in his mental uh, brain that, you know, we're we're not going to... And you see how they're jacking up the zones with the formation. So we're going to simply stay in this cover two. 
one more time. And then what will probably happen is after this down, we're going to go into a cover three uh, and try, depending on how many how much yardage he gets. If he goes underneath one more time, yep, goes underneath, hits his flat. We just got to rally and tackle. So that's a good read. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come out and we're gonna we're gonna essentially we're gonna go with the cover uh, cover uh, cover three um, cover three buzz and we'll see what we can do here. There's the run. Good call. Good call. Good call. We'll see if he goes no huddle here. So now we're down in a run set. Probably should have slipped down. But we the, the D I like is the outside safety blitz. But everybody's on the everybody's on the ball here. And we can call TOs. Now most people most people are gonna try to hit a quick streak, quick flat. I haven't seen a lot of people throw flats. But here he's going to come gun, gun empty. So we're going to go to the cover two invert. Looks exactly like. Um, and we're going to blitz two people here. My job. Got hards. My job is deep, 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 deep. There's a spy. And we're able to catch him. So now third and goal. So again, if he comes out five wide, and he does, we're going to come back out here, and we're going to go into this cover three sky drop, but that's out of an audible. So we're going to come out in loop, quick audible down into the cover three sky. Got a spy there. If I can get a vertical, and I can't. So the only thing i got to watch... I gotta watch this right seam. I got the left. The left side is pretty much boxed, so we'll see here. Right there, gotta stay here. That's where I'm at, and we're gonna get him. Good. So that's perfect, perfect, perfect execution. You saw the ability to stop the run down low. Now we catch him. Now he's got to take a field goal. And he's going to try to get greedy. We're going to stay in our nickel 3 through 5. And we're going to go into a cover 4. We're actually going to go man up. We'll see what this guy does here. This is just straight up deep blues for days. Trying to catch anything. Corner routes might be an option on that right side. Left side. But it's just going to be straight streaks. And he completes it somehow, but we're able to catch it. So that'll do it for the first half. Again, good read. I don't know how he's able to complete that, but. All right. So now we're going to try to catch him in the stretch here. Bring our guy in motion. And we're able to break one. There you see all that all that fluff down underneath. Now I gotta do a good job, and I did not do a good job of getting out of bounds there. And I need to get a spike. I need to get a spike on the ball. Give myself one more play to try to go up two possessions. I got two plays here. Oh, this is bunch quads. Again, I've talked a little bit about bunch quads. I really like the spot play. <sighs> I 
Oh, we're throwing a pick. Dang it. It's all right. I was trying to get it over him, and just got a little bit late on that read. Shaq Griffin. And that might be one of the best catches I've ever seen. And he didn't catch it, praise God. It was like, whoa. All righty, so in this situation, we're just going to go cover two man, cover three man, basically. And I'm just going straight back. Uh, it's okay. But there you see a good, good, good example of field coverage. You know, again, not worried if he gets 50 yards. What we're worried about is does he get 100 yards, and you're seeing – that push-pull of the defense, the ability to be able to adapt it, the ability to be able to change the coverages based off of what the offense is trying to do has been really, really critical for the defense to be able to pitch a shutout this far. Again, mutt drafts, very, very different game mode than head-to-head um, -head or salary cap because you can't pick your playbook. So you've got to make the best of what the playbook offers you. You know, and again, he's got Lamar Jackson. You know, if I'm if I start blitzing left and right now, if he starts running the ball, this four three wide um, is very good for a runner. So if he does want to go that direction, you know, we're okay with that. But where I would like to sit, if I could stay in the three three five, the majority of the game. I'm going to be happy, and so far he's allowed me to do it. Hasn't really got, any, got anything over the cover two. He's got some little runs here and there, but the Tampa two just simply running down, you know, again, five yards here, five yards there. That's okay. We're not too concerned with the check down. We're not too concerned with those things, you know. And if we slip into this little – this is D right here, this cover four – there you see the importance of audibling so we don't get our guys – our zones confused. But there, there was a little change in coverage. He was expecting cover two, hit the guy deep, didn't get it. Now we're going into cover three, or uh, cover two man, right? Again, just changing the coverages behind it, change the coverages behind it. And I'm going to come back this way. I think he is going to end up getting me, but we're going to rally and tackle. Now he's going to go down, no huddle. And what we're going to do is we're going to go he heavy, aggressive, blitz everybody, still gets the first. That's okay. We probably weren't as set as we needed to do. Again, trying to be a little too aggressive there. It's going to not work out for us in the long run. Again, it's a field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. Not killing yourself, not trying to over-pursue, because the second you over-pursue as a defense, the offense can hit you very, very fast, very, very fast this year. And with Lamar Jackson, a weapon like that, again, it's a contain, 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 try to keep him in front of us, try not to let him get out in the open field. That's the dynamic that we're trying to take on as a defense. Ben, but don't break. You're seeing a lot of coverage. You're not seeing a lot of pressure. Why? Because, again, I don't want to get – I don't want to give Lamar a chance to scramble, and I'm not super, super concerned with his ability to beat – all of the max coverage shells because the max coverage shells, when you don't have your offense, right? When you don't have your go-to passing plays, it's difficult to beat the max coverage as he's going to get me right here with that deep post that he's been setting up. And I should have seen that coming. Shaq Griffin just got burned. And I need to make, I need to make a quick adjustment here. Patrick McQueen goes here. Get Griffin over there. Uh-oh. We're kind of caught with our pants down here on this one. Hopefully he'll just run it. And he goes to the air. We're able to catch him. Let's keep him. Let's go back to the huddle. Let's go back to the huddle. Dang it. Uh-oh. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh man. Ah, we're gonna give up six. There you see an a, an issue of not having your RB subs all together. Four three wide nine situation here. Goal line. And let's bring ah oh, terrible penalty. Terrible penalty. Hmm. But this outside safety blitz, everybody's in the run fit. You know, this is an all-out blitz. We're likely going to run the ball right here. We're going to pass him in in case he goes play action. We got him. And let's get it. Big stand. And we'll see what his decision time for him. He's probably going to go for it. The question is, is he going to throw it? Or is he going to run it? Here's coming in with wide trips. So, again, trying to kind of get us to look at something here. Got to reset the play. There we send the spy. Got the pick, Patrick Peterson, reversing field. Let's see if he can outrun them all. And you see big time play calling down the stretch. Probably should have ran the ball on his side, but we're able to get a huge pick six on fourth and one from the red and two critical, and I mean critical red zone stands. And that has been the difference in the game. The defense's ability to stand up in the red zone has been huge so far in this game. Let's see if we can't catch him with the blast. The blast is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated runs in the game, and we just kind of picked the wrong hole there. But the HB blast, I'm telling you, when the ISO and the stretch are stymied and they start being able to stop both of those runs, that blast with the little interior cutback is typically there. The defense has stood up for itself so far, though. You see, bend but don't break. Bend but don't break. Bend but don't break. And then at critical times, send the goons. All right, let's see if we can't run with Kenny Galladay here. If he goes back to that post route. What I like to do is I like this year just to start back. Having everybody at the line has not worked out too well for me yet. Although uh, Mills has ran a really pre impressive 3-4 bear. But we'll see if we can't get it here. Cobra 4 drop. We'll see if we can't bait him into thinking it's the cover four or the cover two. And he's going to run it again, and that's okay. We're okay with giving that up. You know, again, he's got to score twice. He's got to score twice. I'm conceding, 100% conceding the run right now. 100% conceding the run. Perfectly okay doing that. I'm basically begging him to run the ball, trying to say, okay, it's going to be Tampa 2. We're going to – looks exactly the same as Tampa 2. That's okay, you know, and we're just going to rely on block shed. We're going to rely on uh, pursuit. There's cover five. There's the deep, deep, deep post. We got all the guys there, and there he hits me on the back end there. And that was all about not having a spy. I'm just going to slide right down here about off about so many yards. And there we get him. And you see just the changing coverage shells has been key. Here we're going to go to man. 
Oh, he's going to get me again on that. Seems like he always runs a slant right when we're trying to get in him. And he's starting to mix up his plays. He's probably go to a run here. Nope. He's going to slants again. This time we're not going to get caught. Start scrambling there. We send the spy. Catch him again. Again, just the volume of things that he's having to think about. Runs to get some yardage back. Now, I bet you, I bet you we're going to get a quick slants call, but we'll see here. See if this is the right call. Big down right here, third and eight. Can we get him off the field? This is, again, defensive, systematic. We're going to send pressure off that right edge and just see what happens. And he's a run. He's able to get there. All the way down to the one. Setting up another goal line. Another goal line opportunity again. And we'll just see if we can stand tall again. We got both linebackers. What's in if he goes... Oh, I got La recovered. Neil, three stands inside the one-yard line. That's what I'm talking about, about situational football. Hope you see the importance of giving up field goals, stands.